Hello, everybody. This is Corey from Whitmix Corporation coming at you with the second session of Surgical Guides 101. Uh, so today we are going to be covering advanced surgical guide design with Implant Studio, which is from 3Shape. Uh, Evan is going to be ripping through an edentulous case. So we're going to see some, some cool tips and tricks on how to do an edentulous case through the Implant Studio software. Uh, and I believe this would also be creating like a stackable guide, correct, Evan? Yep, there's a couple ways that you can do these. Very cool. So this is going to be a lot of fun today. Uh, once again, my name is Corey Lambertson with Whitmix Corporation. I'm a, the tech support supervisor. And we have Evan Kemper, who's going to be ripping through the, his, uh, his title is Application Engineer. So uh, remember, once again, this is recorded. If you have any questions, please type them in. I have an open dialog box. So as soon as you have a question, I'll go ahead and answer it. And uh, from there, uh, with it being recorded, if you need any CE credits, this is a registered course for credits. So um, Evan, yep. take it away. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do is talk a little bit about the differences on the tissue born and some of the extra things you'll need. So uh, with the tissue born, you're going to be, one, you'll need a, the CT scan still, but you're also gonna need an existing uh, denture um, CT scan. And so there's two different stages that you or um, scan steps. The first one, you're going to have the existing denture in the mouth, and you're going to place about five of these radiopaque markers. Uh, these are little stick-on ones. Uh, you could also embed like uh, metal BBs. Those will essentially serve the same purpose, but you will put those on the lingual side of the denture, um, equally spaced around the arch. Uh, you'll be able to see it when we actually get to the scan, but uh, if you want to buy the stick-on ones, then you can get them on Amazon. Um, I would probably go with something about two, two and a half millimeters. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, something around there. Um, and then the other thing you'll need uh, for the second scan is we're going to scan the denture, uh, do a CT scan of the denture outside the mouth, and we got we have to cover the entire external surface with a radiopaque substance. Um, I think most typically what people use is barium sulfate uh, that's used in um, uh, x-ray and uh, CT imaging because it, uh, the density makes it uh, show up um, in the, the cone beam. So this is essentially going to allow you to capture the external surface of the um, denture in the CT scan. Whereas when it's in the patient's mouth, all you're capturing are those BBs. So you will be able to see that we have these two different scans. And what, what we're getting out of that, one, the denture becomes the guide, but also we're getting the tissue, the um, edentulous tissue surface from the uh, intaglio side of the denture. Um, because what we need that on when it's in its compressed state, not if we were to like try and do an intraoral scan or something like that. So uh, those are two things that you'll need. Um, there may be other like uh, sprays or radiopaque coatings that you can use, but um, you just need something that will show up, uh, make, make that denture show up completely in that second scan. So that second scan, it's not actually, you're not going to coat it with that, uh, the, that bar, barlinium, I probably can't say that, sulfate. You're not going to coat it and put it in the patient's mouth. You're going to coat no. it and scan it outside of the patient to capture right, the right. full. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, technically this is... Uh, it's a heavy metal, but given its density, you can check out the Wikipedia article. Um, this is used uh, in x-ray imaging to um, typically like uh, highlight the intestine um, and you drink it and it's like a milky substance. Um, okay. But because of its density, you don't absorb enough of it to, for it to be toxic. But again, we don't want to be putting it. You don't, it doesn't need to be on the surface when it's in the patient's mouth. So I wouldn't put it in the patient's mouth with this stuff on it. Gotcha. Good tips. Thank you. Yep. So we'll just go ahead and open Implant Studio. Log in. We need some music when this is playing. Yeah. <laughs> when, well, luckily we're like... not on my main desktop or we'd still be waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Uh, we're back at the landing page. This is the cases tab that looks similar to dental system. Uh, I'm going to come in and do a new case. And the sample case we have um, is a lower denture, uh, mainly just because that lets you see the nerve mapping. Um, but if I'm going to be doing a dentulous 
all I have to do is click one tooth on the arch, go over to implant planning, and then make sure that normally when I click it, that edentulous would not be checked. So I need to check it. And then you'll see all the teeth show up in green. Um, that's all you have to do as far as setting up the order form. Um, if you were with us on Monday, you'll notice I don't have the little scanner icon uh, because we're basically importing two CT scans. We don't actually have any models or anything we're gonna be scanning. Gotcha. So then I'll go to scan import, which is the next step. So even though that we're not going to have like an all in X, or sorry, we are the, really what we're achieving is an all in X. We don't have to select each implant site in the order form, correct? Right, right. Um, you just pick it uh, when you get to the planning. Cool. Um, so uh, we have our two scans that we need. The first one is the lower denture CT scan. So I'm gonna click that. And I'm gonna go into where I have my denture saved and open it. And again, we have these sliders where we can slide through. So you can see we have the surface of the denture, but those little white spots that show up, those are those radiopaque markers. So those will remain on the denture even when it's outside the mouth. And basically they're what's gonna allow us to line the two scans up. Um, so I can just make sure that it looks like I have the, you know, the full scan and then just hit select and that'll import it. So here you can see it. Typically, if we did not have that radiopaque, um, the barium sulfate on the surface, then all you would see are these little BBs. Uh, it looks like in this case, they've embedded a BB. They don't have the sticker kind. Uh, so either way works. It just needs to be a uniform identifiable uh, material uh, that will get picked up. You know, it's a radiopaque material, so metal. Gotcha. Um, so that looks good. Now we'll go to import patient CT scan. We're gonna go up a level, go in where our head scan is and hit open. So again, I can kind of scan through these and just see, you can see those radiopaque markers right there. So now we can see what if we, when we have just the, the BBs or the stick on uh, little metal pieces that uh, without the, the surface coating and it's in the patient's mouth, that's giving us the same um, locators um, uh, between the two scans that the software will then automatically detect and line up. Um, so that's how we're gonna relate the two. So we're gonna go next. And we're gonna go into the scan preparation stage where we're gonna trim down these cone beams. So first we're doing the head. Uh, this works the same way as we saw Monday. I can just drag these blue sliders to crop out what I don't need. And so here the key is since we're not doing the upper, we just need to make sure we don't trim out any of those lower indicators. So that looks good there. We're gonna look at each view. No, this one looks like they did an upper and lower denture at the same time, right? Yeah, they did. There's okay. just, we, the, the three shape sample doesn't have the uh, upper. Upper, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but it'd just be a repeat of the process. Yeah. Gotcha. So just whenever uh, the, uh, the end user is going through this, if they do an upper and lower at the same time, make sure, of course, if they, only want to do the lower, make sure to be careful with your cropping that you don't accidentally crop too low or too high. Yep. And again, just to touch on, we want to make sure that we, our volume region's valid and that we have enough um, VRAM on our video card to handle this. So the edentulous one will use more than two gigabytes potentially. So that's why you need at least a four gigabyte card uh, to do all of the workflows in Implant Studio. So we go next. Same thing here, crop the lower denture. Wow. 
Make sure we don't trim too much. <laughs> I'll make it a little challenging. Yep. Because remember, this will also end up being the surgical guide. Now, if you were to trim too much with that, would the software give you any sort of like prompt, like, hey, you aired out or, you know, you trimmed too much or? Nope. No, so there's no you... warning because it, it just assumes you know your anatomy and what you need and you're trimming off stuff that's not necessary. So if you trim too much, make sure you go back and fix it before proceeding. Yep. Yeah. And you can always just hit back and change the trimming, the cropping region. Yep. So there's my denture. Nice, it looks sharp, looks yep. crisp. Um, now we're gonna be doing our panoramic curve. So same as yesterday, except I'm just gonna bring it a little further down into the bone, or sorry, same as Monday, but, and then we just are going to adjust these yellow points. And that makes our panoramic curve. Nice. And so now we're get in the scan alignment. Uh, you can see it of uh, the five, it's identified four of them automatically, and it just needs confirmation on uh, this one. And so all we're going to do, and it, here it looks like there's enough scatter in the image. It wasn't quite sure if that's what it, it, um, it matches up to be. So it's already identified it on the denture. We just need to click here. Now you can see we got the orange uh, spheres with the little blue ring and then the blue with the orange. Everything is um, auto detected and correctly identified. So then we can click next. And you can see that's lined everything up for us. And all we wanna do here on the manual alignment is like, we'll just kind of uh, scan through these different slices by holding control and scrolling the mouse wheel. And if you saw like bone protruding through the denture surface, we'd know, oh, well, something's off about this alignment because obviously this is uh, the soft tissue surface. So, right, it can't, it can't pass through there. Yeah. I mean, technically it could, but it, it's could, wrong. But yeah. <laughs> so, that looks good to me. If you did want to manually adjust it, then you just left click in one of the, either the orthogonal or tangential view and actually move it. But we are not going to move it because this confirmation is good. So then I'm just going to check the confirmation checkbox. And that's, pretty, that's pretty wild. It shows the alignment error on that previous stage. It was only 30 yep. microns. I mean, that's yeah, which is nothing. even more accurate technically than the when it's doing the surface scan to the cone beam. Right. So here I am just selecting the surface that I want the software to regard as the soft tissue. Um, you can see it, it auto detected it pretty well. Um, and I'm just left clicking to add a little bit more. That looks good to me. So then I'm going to go next. All right, so since we're doing a um, edentulous uh, mandibular, we have to map the nerve. Uh, this time we do have to map both sides. So I'm gonna start, it's asking for right side of the head. And we're gonna find that nerve canal. And I'm using the panoramic view to kind of drag this crosshair to where I can see it in the panoramic. And then I'll come over to the orthogonal single click, I'll make it a little bigger. And then I'm gonna scroll through. And as soon as it disappears, I mark the next spot. And that is, I am holding control on the keyboard and scrolling the mouse wheel to move that. If you want to, you could probably jump to that, the tangential view. Yep, yep, so if I come over here to tangential, then See where it's at, there you are. Yep. Yeah. 
and that's far enough. So then I can just minimize this back and you know, check your 3D, make sure it looks like, you know, it's not coming out the side of the jaw or something uh, where it's not supposed to. Now I'll just go next. Now we're gonna do the left side, same process. Move the crosshairs till we find the canal. This one doesn't feel as clear as the other side. Yep. And that is one thing you could run into. Um, the quality of the cone beam really determines how easy these things are to see. Now, if, if anybody's interested in like the specifics for your CBCT machine, just send us an email at product support at woodmix.com. 3Shape has a full document that covers uh, everything that you need to know on what you need for your CBCT. Um, yep. And even like the different output types and so on and so forth. Yeah. So once we have the nerve map, we're going to just go next and that's going to get us to the, um, the planning stage. And so um, Monday we had a, just a plus underneath the tooth that we had identified um, number 19 in the order form. Now we can just hover over any of these teeth and we have a plus. So we can basically add an implant wherever we want. Um, so I'm just gonna pick one to start with. Let's say I'm gonna start the second molar. So I'm gonna click that. Um, now one thing you'll notice too when we're in the edentulous is some of these manufacturers have anchor pins. And so the anchor pins are the additional thing we're gonna add beyond just the, um, the implants. And that's what's, we're, during the surgery, they're actually gonna anchor this thing to the jaw. Um, since we don't have teeth to lock it in, we're actually going to lock it in uh, to the jawbone itself. Um, so I'm just going to stick with uh, the Strauman library. If I wanted to change, I can go back and pick from any of these ones that I've downloaded. Let's pick a different one. So we'll use Dentium. So I'm going to pick the platform. And again, here's the platform size, the actual implant diameter, and then the implant length. So the key here is to try and pick the diameter I think I'm gonna use. I can always change the length later without having to come back to this window. So I'm gonna go for the biggest one I can put back there. Now, the one thing you'll notice is, if you, especially if you're watching Monday, when I click that on Monday, it actually dropped it in. But right now, it doesn't uh, do that because it doesn't have any position for reference. So I'm gonna move the crosshair on the panoramic to where I think I might want that implant. And let's say if I'm gonna place it under the second molar on the denture, so like right about there, you can use the 3D um, plane as a reference. Um, so when I move this, you can see kind of where that crosshair is. Now, when I move my mouse over the, any of these uh, axial or orthogonal views, then I have an implant that follows it. So we'll just go ahead and uh, make this view bigger. And I'm gonna single click with, at the uh, level that I want to interface. And now it rotates with my mouse and I'll single click again for the position of that implant. Now let's start, look, we gotta look at both views. So if I were to change the position here now, my safety zone, uh -oh. um, I'm too close to that nerve. And um, just to show if I want, I can use a custom safety zone by clicking this option, this button here over on the left and checking this box and we can reduce the apical distance. So even with that custom safety zone, it's still too close. So what I could do there is say, all right, well, this implant's too long for this spot. I'm just gonna go to the next shortest one. That's kind of nice. As soon as you change it, it resets the safety zone. Yep. Back to default. That also gives me a little bit more room for the positioning of the implant.
Now you can see that's that's the screw hole if you're using a non-angled screw. So um, to keep that in mind for the uh, either the provisional or you know the final. So the next thing I could go onto the next implant, but I also like to go ahead and take care of the sleeve while I'm here, at least initially. Um, so what you can see with um, the dentium implants is they don't provide a sleeve library um, right in, inside theirs. So I would have to pick one of the other options for it. So here we've got true abutment. That's an interesting looking sleeve. Yep, so let's hide that denture real quick. Actually, there we go. There we go. So, yeah, it kind of locks in. That's cool. And again, they allow it to be adjustable. And so you can just adjust the height with that green slider. And then the drilling protocol will tell you um, how they need to adjust their drill or put in a, a spacer. So from there I could go, let's say we're going to do one on the other side of the arch. Stick with the same implant. Now what you'll see is it turned everything red here because my crosshair over here on the panoramic view is still on top of that other implant. So we're going to come across. Let's turn our denture back on so we can see where that is. And then we'll single click, single click. So I'm going to need a shorter one over here as well. change our sleeve. And now we can move on to next implant. So it's just kind of rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. um, until you've got your all your the implants you want added. Go a little bit narrower here. I have to be asked why you're doing this. The software just looks so friendly to use. I mean, it have is. you ever used any of the other softwares at all? Uh, we had one that we were looking at as like a private label at one point that was pretty much seemed just like a knockoff of this, but with literally all the user friendly parts of it stripped out. Yeah. Um, I played around a little bit with Blue Sky Bio, but not enough to really, you know, give it a solid, you know, review one way or another. Yeah. Um, I've used, I, I, with another customer, or with a customer at one point in time, I played with the Blue Sky Bio, but it was like right when it first came out. And so I'm sure it's probably a lot better than what it is or what it was. But this just, the way it flows and just the, the ease of it, and it just looks so convenient. Yeah, no, it's um pretty quick for you to be able to go in and, you know, generate a uh, surgical guide and do your, your implant planning. Um, so the other thing you can do uh, when you're doing multiples, if you want, is to, um, you can group, just like you can group um, custom abutments and dental system, you can group implants in Implant Studio if you were trying to keep some of them um, parallel. So let me go ahead and add another one and then I'll show you how that works.
Oh, put sleeve on it. There we go. And I'm just switching back and forth between those views by left clicking on them. And so when you're when you're placing these sleeves in, are you just placing? I mean, are, I see that you're raising it almost above the dentures itself. Is there a, a reason why you're moving it so much further away? Or um... no, well, this one in particular, um, I think the. Uh, it was having an issue with the, that little, the bearing that was there was making it think it was touching tissue, but. Um, gotcha. Okay. No, uh, and depending on how you're gonna fabricate this guide, uh, and we'll see those options uh, here in a, a few minutes, um, that you may change, wanna change the height based on how you wanna do this surgery. So you can either do a one piece or the, there's uh, a stacked one or two separate. Um, and that is all going to depend on, you know, what occlusions left for them to bite down on when this is getting seated. Yeah. Um, but we'll see that in a second. So let me go ahead and hide the denture again so you can see. Actually, we'll, we'll go and kind of fade out the CT so you can see the implants a little better. And let's say we wanted to see if we could keep, you know, the two in the anterior uh, parallel. Then what we could do is come into this group option. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pick the one that we want to kind of, to be the parent or the master. So let's say it's gonna be 22. And then 27 is kind of gonna be the, the child uh, that will follow it as you move it. And we're gonna click the group implants. And so now we'll go back to, let's see, we'll minimize this view, but so we can see the 3D at the same time. And if I rotate, now oh, they, cool. they rotate together. That's cool. So that's, I mean, it's just going to lock it so it's nice and parallel with each other. So, I mean, yeah. you always see those those uh, those horror stories of photos online of people taking the, uh, uh, or getting like an x-ray and you see the two implants that are about, you know, perpendicular to each other and they're right next to each yeah. other. It's, um, this really takes a lot of that guesswork out for uh, for your dentist or prosthodontist. Yep. Um, so other things you can do, um, we can turn on the, uh, over here on the left, the um, distance to neighboring implants. So like when you click an implant, it will tell you the distance to the neighbors. So you can see here we're 15, well, 14 and a half, then 15 and a half. 20.27 and 15 and a half. You can also do angle measurements. Uh, let's hide some more of this stuff so that we can see those numbers a little better. I'll turn that off. So between these two implants, there's a 4.6 degree uh, difference. Uh, obviously you'd wanna see zero here because we decided we told it to make those parallel. It better be zero. <laughs> yeah. And then um, between this implant and these two is 9.74. Really not bad. Yeah. So uh, you can also do distance to nerve. Is it going to the closest point to the closest point of the nerve? Is yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Takes yeah. a lot Cl of guesswork. Closest out. point on the implant to closest point on the, on the nerve. Cool. And then also distance to the jaw scan. Um, let me bring the CT back in. So you can do the same thing um, with measurements uh, like we saw on Monday within these 2D images. So we have the measurement tool here. The first pop out is distance and it's just, you know, single click, single click. So we've got a little over two and a half millimeters to the tissue. You can do a density measurement or angle measurement as well. For instance, let's go to one of these posterior ones. If we wanted to say we wanted the screw hole to come out on in this uh, central groove on this uh, denture, 
then we can see what that screw angle would be if we plan the implant that, uh, um, in this position by first make clicking through the axis of the implant and then another single click and then where we want the screw hole to be. So that's a 15.43 degree angle. Um, Uh, that also, you know, if we were looking at if something that's like cantilevered, we could see how much of an angle that we've got going there. And you can hit the this button right here. It looks like a garbage can just removes the last measurement. So once we're happy, oh, I'm not moving on yet. We got to do the anchor pins. Almost, Don't forget that. Almost jumped too far ahead. Yeah. So if we're if we've added all the implants we want, the next thing to do is add anchor pins. Um, so I'm just going to start on one side, and I'm going to click the plus. And then so Dentium offers either an anchor pin, which will just basically a hole be drilled, and you'll insert this. It's almost like a nail. Or in this case, they also have an anchor screw that's going to get screwed in. So we'll put both on there just so that we can see what they look like. So I'm going to click anchor pin. Typically, you're not going to have as many like size options here. It's usually just going to be length. Um, so let's go with a six millimeter. And so probably the shorter ones, if if the way you have to place them um, is going to mean that they would be hard, like they'd be in the way of the surgery, then you could go with a shorter one. Um, but we place these just the way we place an implant. So we were going to put a pin right about here. And then let's blow this view up. So I'm going to click where I want it to go in. And then I'm going to rotate it. It needs to be intersecting the uh, denture so that it's attached uh, to the guide. So we'll look at that view. Let's look at this one. So probably what we're going to want to do is angle this towards the anterior a little bit since it's make it a little bit easier to to access. Yeah. Yeah to force, forcefully attach <laughs> to yeah, your jaw. So, there we go, that should be easily accessed and not you know, get bumped by the cheek and stuff like that. All right, so then we're gonna go to, just add another one. Let's do the screw, because I haven't actually looked at the screw before. And minimize this. Move the crosshair. Blow this view up. And I'm just blowing it up so that you can see it better, but you could. Um... You could uh, just, you know, do it in the little windows, which is what I typically would do. So let's real quick go to this 3D view and see what that thing looks like. Yeah, so you can see the difference. This one is just a pin. This one actually is a threaded screw that will, you know, have to be drilled in. Yeah. Either way, this looks really painful. I'm yeah. just gonna <laughs> just gonna be honest. This looks. I hope yeah. I I hope I never have never to have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Higher so. living in higher living in chemistry. So at least at least there's uh, some I guess anesthesiologists that can numb you up pretty good or knock you out. Yeah. So I'm gonna place this last pin. And we're going to bring it towards the anterior a little bit more. Check that 3D view. That looks nice. Yeah, I think all those will be easily accessible. So now that we've placed our pins, we are ready to move on to the next step. So um, this is where we're going to be making the guide. And we can see here we have a couple different options than what we had when we did the tooth born. Now, um, 
this is where we'll see those three different options for how we fabricate this. The um, option right now is um, let's just enable regular surgical guide. And so what that's doing is all this is going to be one piece, uh, just as you see it here. Now what they've done is anywhere where there would be, you know, a, a mating surface, a depth surface for the drill, they've cut out the denture so that it's it's flat and um, flush with that so that the teeth wouldn't be interfering with your drill depth. This one being higher um, than that is technically going to be a little bit of an issue unless you relieve the opposing denture because what you the page what you have to do is um, to seat this you would have the upper denture in and then the patient would bite oh. and hold that. And then these holes are drilled and then the pins inserted after that it's locked in place. So the bite, you know, could be relaxed. Um, but until that's seated, they gotta be able to seat the, the guide. Uh, Cause we don't have any teeth or anything to, you know, sit it on, engage that. So if this sleeve was lower below the level of the occlusion, then um, this probably still has enough existing dentition that it would probably be okay to not have to do the split guide. Um, but if I were to do this as one piece now with this sleeve at the height that it's at, then I would have to relieve that area on the upper denture so that this wouldn't interfere with the bite. Um, so what I could do is lower this. And you can see down the bottom left, it's already computing the changes to the guide. Um, so this is, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of these and you, you want to make sure you got hardware that will do this fast because you don't want to be sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting all the time. This is where the Ferrari comes into play. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you can see it, it, it's relieved that area. Um, so if I think that there's enough occlusion um, to keep a stable bite while this is being seated, then I can just move forward with this one piece. Um, but let's say if I had placed, you know, six implants, then that would probably would have wiped out pretty much all of the occlusion. And, and then in that case, I got I need to do one of the other two options. Yep. Um, the second option is going to be to enable a two piece guide. And you can see it's already generating that now. And the way the two piece guide works is it takes the denture, let me lift this. So it makes the surgical guide and then takes the denture and um, adds material in places, but also it creates the cutout so that this can slide on top. And then now I have pretty much all my occlusion left except for some here and some there. And so that's definitely enough that I'd have a stable bite. So basically you will snap these two parts together, patient bites or the bite is held there. And then these three anchor pin holes are drilled. The anchor pins are set. Then this part can be removed and the su surgery um, proceed on with the surgery with these four implant drilling pockets. And then this whole piece is out of the way. Yeah. So that is one option. Um, these, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about this style. Um, you, you will have to spend a little more time tweaking your um, manufacturing settings to make sure you're getting a good intimate fit here and everything's seating easily and not binding up anywhere that's gonna change this a little bit. Um, my preference typically would be if you can do the one piece, but probably in a lot of scenarios with fully edentulous, you're not going to be able to because there just won't be enough occlusion for that stable bite. The other option we have though is to do dual surgical guides. So you can see here we get two different windows now. If I zoom in, we get one guide that is just the denture with the anchor pin sleeves, and then we get one that is basically, you know just the minimal guide still has the three anchor pins, but also has the four implants. And what you do with these, you'll have, you'll put this first one in the mouth and you know, bite together, get the bite where it's supposed to be, drill the holes for the anchor pins. Then you just take this out 
and then you put that in and you'll be able, you know, you have to find those anchor pin holes and anchor it, but then but essentially then now it's anchored in the, the spot where it's mm -hmm. supposed to be and you go on with your um, surgery or uh, drilling the other four sites. Uh, we did have a question come in, I just noticed. Will you be addressing bone reduction and or bone supported design in the next webinars? Um, so that feature is uh, been implemented in Implant Studio, but it's not cleared um, the FDA yet. So it's not available in the US. Once it becomes available in the US, and I, I believe along with that is also gonna be the um, custom above or screw retain crowns directly in Implant Studio. Um, when that comes out and we can actually install it here, um, then we'll probably, yeah, set up a, a webinar once we've had a chance to go through and see how they've implemented it. Right. Um, but until that time, uh, no, just because we'd ha there are ways to get around it, but I'm not going to go into depth on that. Essentially, it's not cleared the FDA, so we shouldn't be using it here. Um, but that is coming at some point. Um, That'll be pretty so. exciting when that's here. I know yeah. that's yeah, because that, that is one of the of things people. that yeah people want. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are the three different ways that you do it. Um, you can see the, our settings can change a little bit depending on what uh, way we're doing this. So um, we have this set up with a carbon printer with our surgical guide resin, and um, basically we're picking in this scenario the offset from the sleeve, which is going to determine the the tightness of that socket for the sleeve, and then the thickness of the guide. Um, and typically most materials that are 3D printed, you don't want to go below two. Right. Um, but that should be in the IFU for whatever material you're using. If I go back to this style of guide, and you can see once it's generated each of these, when I had first enabled them, it's not having to regenerate it unless I make a change. Um, so now we have an offset from sleeve. We have a thickness for the guides. Um, you can see that's why it bulked this one out. Um, and then we have a spacing between the two pieces. So that's the, the part that you're going to be playing with to get that intimate fit. And then the retention amount, that's how much uh, retention this uh, guide is engaging on the other guide. So I'll turn that to zero. So if you add the retention amount, it's going to make it like a snap to fit, right? Yeah. 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 Honestly, I found you don't really need that because there's enough surface area uh, that's kind of creating that friction friction uh, yeah. grip on it. Yeah. Um, While well, that's generating, we had another question. Can you re-import this implant position back in a dental system um, to pre-drill holes in the provisional? So yes, you can. Uh, it, we'll see at the end, it gives you a um, surface scan that also includes the implant location information and that can be imported into dental system. Um, and then you'd probably have to do something like um, have it, uh, cause you're gonna have to put something like in the dental um, uh, order form, some kind of custom abutment in there. Uh, and then if you had the Let's see if we did, there's a, the provisional, you can do a copy of an existing denture and turn it into an implant um, retained uh, bar. So I, if you do that workflow, then that would probably be the one that would allow you to punch the holes through. Um, I have not personally tried that exact scenario, Yeah. Um, but that's something we could play around with and if uh, maybe touch up on another webinar, uh, that's kind of what you do after implant studio and dental system. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, they've a done a question. lot of work in that uh, uh, section of dental system. Um, and I feel pretty certain that it would work uh, if it works for a, a stone model uh, with scan bodies, then it should work with this. Um, but I don't want to say a hundred percent, you know, with a hundred percent certainty since I haven't uh, checked it and I don't like being wrong, <laughs> yeah. especially on a live webinar. <laughs> um, so, and then if we go back to the single one, it's the same kind of settings, except it's just mainly the offset from the sleeve because uh, we don't, we're not worried about an offset from teeth or anything like that. So uh, once I've picked the kind of guide that I want to move forward with, then I can um, add ID tags. And in this case where I picked the, the stackable, 
then it, I have an ID tag for each part. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And again, so um, we're going to shorten this a little bit. Uh, you can type whatever you want by default. It's the order number. So it's a patient number. And, and you, I would, I'll go ahead. Oh, I was going to say this automatically does it as it, uh, engraved, not embossed, because obviously if you emboss it, it's not going to fit together. Um, but if we hit preview, there it's cut in. And if we click next, it'll take us to adding an ID tag to the fixation piece. I was hoping that I was, I was my comma was going to be. I hope they don't have it, so you can have it um, inverted or or, or yeah. uh, a, a positive feature. So, yeah, they do let you do that on the the external fixation piece, but not the internal that this has to fit over. So, <clears throat> so then we'll go next again, and here's where we get to the um, the approval of the planning and the guide. So right now it's preparing the surgical report and the, the planning report. So if I click so, show surgical report, uh, just like if you were with us on Monday, you can see we get the, um, the order reference. So this is basically how this is all getting identified and tracked. Um, this is the four approval report that will get signed by the doctor that's approving this. Um, you can see we have all of our pins, our four implants. We have the information for ordering the implants from Dentium. We also have the info for ordering the, um, the pins. That's so nice. Yeah. That, that just takes so much guesswork out of it, you know. It's Sorry, so convenient. So, yeah, this was the pins. Uh, that was the implants. Then we have a detailed positioning and photos of each implant as we go down through here. And the pins, and it just goes around the arch, uh, lowest to highest numbered. Uh, this is a dent density readout uh, for the bone density. So that gets sent to the surgeon uh, or the, the doctor who's approving it. Uh, once you get the approved copy back, you can come in and check approved planning. And that now locks the planning stage. So I can go back and view the planning, but I can't move implants or add or remove pins or anything like that. So then if we go to, if we approve the surgical guide, then it's going to lock the surgical guide stage as well. And then it's going to give me the drilling protocol. And so depending on the info for that implant and the sleeve, you'll get um, more or less information. This is using a universal sleeve. It tells you the color, the offset from the implant surface, and the minimum drill length. So you can see the implant is 10 millimeters. My offset from the sleeve to the, the uh, interface of the implant is 11. So that gives me a total for, I need a 21 millimeter long drill. And then uh, depending on the, the sleeve kit, there may be, um, you know, basically restrictors that'll stop it when it gets to 21. Um, but that'll depend on the, the sleeve hardware kit and the drilling kit. Um, so same thing here for the pin. Um, so we get all this inf information on each implant, minimum drill length. So that would go along with the guide um, to provide the drilling information. And once we're, we're good with that, we'll just click next. And that's going to actually take us to the final step where it, it's going to save these two guides as well as the surface scan that I can import into dental system. So if I open that output folder, you can see I've got my surgical guide, which is gonna be that the 
actual surgical piece. Nice. Then I have the what they're calling the additional surgical guide, which is the fixation section that'll snap over it. Um, then I have the lower jaw scan with implant info. So that's actually given me the denture with the implant positions that could be imported, as well as the lower gingiva, which is do just you, the tissue. Do you think the denture with the implant position would cause the facet air inside three shapes since it's already closed? You know, it's a good it's, question. It's a good question to, yeah. to try. Um, I assume since they're giving you that uh, file, would, they've factored that in. I would hope. Kind of scenario. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's another one of those things. I just haven't actually gone through that exact workflow. So yeah. I don't want to give misinformation. Maybe we can try it try to it see out. if it, yeah. yeah, to see if it imports in and then we can let the viewers know on Friday for our final. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, yeah, that, that could be something we could do in between now and Friday. And that way we, that we can answer that question straight up on, uh, on Friday. Uh, but again, now we in this output, we have the surgical report that's marked as approved. So if you have a copy of this and a copy of the signed one, and they're the same, then we know we didn't go, nothing was tweaked after the approval. Right, right. Uh, so just, um, you know, protecting yourself in case of unfortunate things. So if we could just click next, it's going to take us um, back to the... Um, order in the uh, cases tab. And so from here, we could just go on and start another um, in, uh, guide, or we could, in this case, you know, if we were going to import it into dental system, you go over to your dental system and start the import. Um, but we're not going to do that today. We um, will check that out and touch on it on Friday. Cool. Thank you, Evan, so much for, for your presentation today. It was excellent. Uh, very, uh, very, uh, I guess, just packed full of information. Uh, so just to uh, conclude, we have a, a couple more minutes here. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, and just remember on Friday, we're going to be covering, uh, we're going to touch on the three-shaped dental system, see if that import works or not exactly from this exact case. And then we will also be covering the 3D printing aspects. So we're going to be printing this on a Verabuild 3D printer from Whitmix. And we'll be, we also will be printing this on a, uh, a Sega Max 3D printer, both using our VeraGuide surgical guide resin. So that's going to be very exciting to see firsthand. We'll be able to show you how to use it inside the software, uh, some tips and tricks for it. And uh, then, of course, remember on next week, uh, we have a whole nother series. This is going to be on RPD design. Now, just for those that are watching next week, for those who have scheduled themselves for the Monday webinar, we actually forgot it's a holiday. And so we will not be broadcasting on Monday. That is going to be broadcasted on Tuesday. So we're going to have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday next week for our webinar. So just uh, for the viewers that have uh, have actually signed up for Monday. I believe you may have accidentally been kicked off for Monday. So if you signed up for Monday, please sign up again for it to be on Tuesday. Uh, so sorry for the inconvenience on that. Um, and if, uh, if you guys have any other questions, it doesn't look like we have anything on, uh, on the actual live session here. We also don't have anything on the Facebook live session either so uh let's go ahead and let's conclude it thank you evan so much for, yep. for all of your work today i appreciate it yep thanks to everybody else yeah thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you friday